this uh, holy work of racial equity gives us maybe uh, a, a religious lens to put on about what we mean when we say an individual person's racism. Language is a funny thing. And so many times when you say the word racism, people either have the reaction of that's not me because racism means guys in hoods and burning crosses, mm -hmm. or they then turn it around and say that anytime anybody doesn't like what I say or do or tries to call me to account that they're being racist. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's one of those words that has been co-opted in a negative way. And so having these precise and clear definitions is very important from the beginning because that way people start to deconstruct some of that mythology. I appreciated the, the groundwater training because a week later I was with Tony and Debbie and Allison for the diocesan training. And this really kind of gave a good overview mm -hmm. that helped me start the self-reflection piece that um, I could walk into the latter program and have some knowledge base from which to work and also some language that I could use when I try to express myself. I thought that was an interesting way to approach the concept of white privilege because it's a privilege that you haven't earned. It's just mm -hmm. based on the color of your skin. I think um, one of the things we really, really hoped for by kicking it off with with the REI training was that it would give us a common language. So oh, going through this experience gives us that personal experience that allows us to be teachers in a much more humble and gracious way. Like, yeah, I once thought that I wasn't white either when I heard that whiteness was this, and then I realized I can't get away from it. What am I gonna do with it now? I think we need to be very cautious about the intellectualizing it. And I think there's something about internalizing it in an emotional level that we need to make sure uh, we're able to do. And when we talk with others, that's what, it's, what kind of happens. And I think that's what's part of the training at least did for me. The ultimate end of the kind of pedagogy that we're offering um, allows us to be teachers in our everyday lives with other people and from our own shared experience of learning about this and finding that common language and common understanding to be able to change, change it. It's all about story, all about story. And that's ultimately right. Once we do the inner work, then we do the work in our system, the historical digging to draw people into um, the story and let them find their place in it um, and hear how God is speaking to them. That very much goes along with the first three quadrants of becoming beloved community, but I don't want to lose track of the fourth one, repairing the breach, because for us to find out all that we haven't done um, is is great, but then we need to do something about it. My my hope is that these kinds of things get raised at every kind of meeting that happens at Trinity. <laughs> you know, whether it's education, whether it's governance, whether it's talking about liturgy, whatever it is. You know, I I think I think this needs to permeate the atmosphere. When someone says, I want to do something, we can give them places to start making it a spiritual practice. And that's part of the work that we're also doing on the sidelines of Spiritual Adult Formation Committee is each week there's a spiritual practice that comes out in um, 
the E! News, and it's an invitation to go deeper. Sacred Ground is 10 sessions, and it is it's a curriculum where you watch videos at home and do some reading. I would say average two to three hours of prep each for each session. Um, we'll be meeting every two weeks. And the material is sometimes very uncomfortable because it's history that you may not know. And also the questions we will use to discuss it really try to connect the material to you personally. Because so much of what we talk about is personal, we do ask people to commit to being to every session they possibly can and not, you know, it's not a like drop in, drop out kind of thing. We want you to, to be there unless there's an emergency and you can't be um, because it's, it does build on the trust that people in the group have with each other. Like a lot of other things, we want instantaneous done, you know, but this is going to take a lot of thought. We talk about sin as a church, you know, conscious and unconscious. Marty, you were talking about the uh, um, someone sort of yelling at you and telling mm -hmm. you in ways in which you're racist. And the work that we want to do is to have that realization come from within each person yes. uh, and come from a person's own experience. So that's part of why this is such a long program, because it mm -hmm. takes reflection, it takes self-work. Um, it takes diving into our individual histories, and that's what sets us up to be able to do that as a system and look at Trinity because we've done that work on our own. Mm -hmm.